Seymour. Hi, How are you? Very well. Good to see you. You too. You look great. How are all the kids? Oh, they're fantastic. Yeah. They're really great. Yeah, the twins. Yeah. Twins are amazing. A lot it's of work. A lot of work. Making a film in Toronto right now. Uh, we've been there one week and they're already playing ice hockey. Are they real? They are. They're With amazing. actual skates? With actual skates and actual sticks and pucks and the whole thing. But they're only four. I know. <laughs> That's why I have to, like, you know, I keep slim running after them, just trying to catch up with them. No kidding. Yeah. Now, how did they learn? Did they have a class or something? Um, yes, they, they, I took them into a class. They're in a group class there, and they just they put the skates on. They fell down a couple of times, and then they went, hey, this is fun. No kidding. Yeah. See, I haven't great. done that yet. No? No. Well, what do you great. do for the parties? Do you do big things for their birthdays? Um, we have done. I don't know whether we'll do it anymore. But on their third birthday, we, I said to the boys, you know, what do you want for your birthday party? And they said reptiles. And I went, what? I said, no, no, no. You know, mommy's phobic of snakes, like, big time. Like, I don't go anywhere near snakes. In, in the zoo, I, you know, I go to the monkey cage. I don't go near the snakes. Right. They wanted snakes. Live snakes? Live snakes. Why don't you just say, okay, and go to Toys R Us and get a rubber one? <laughs> no, no, no. They wanted live snakes, reptiles, you know, lizards, the oh whole thing. So Lord. I thought, you know what? Okay, that's what they want. That's what we'll get. So they arrived, and, and this guy came in this big sort of bag, and I didn't really see any snakes. And all of a sudden, one of my tables, you know, and we, we did this in, um, on our tennis court, was just full of snakes and reptiles. They keep pulling these things out of bags. And, and I thought, well, I just won't look. I won't look. And then I, all of a sudden, I, I turned around, and Johnny, one of the twins, three years old, has a huge albino bow constrictor around his neck, which uh, is like six foot long, and uh, this fat around. Uh, I think you have a picture of it here. Somewhere. I have not seen any oh, pictures no, there is. of it. Oh, here it is. Wait a minute. Here it is. So, they so, wouldn't show me because I'm so repulsed no, well, by it. Well, let me tell you. What happened is I saw him with a snake around his neck, and I thought, oh, my God, and I don't even dare go near it or touch it. So I put it around my neck. And its tail moved, and I freaked. But this is a picture of me with a snake around my Oh, head. yeah, you look really phobic there. Take a <laughs> well, look I at the I got over it. I got over it. Your happy face. You're not phobic so, at all. I was. I was. Trust me. And then I went, and I saw my mother was sitting at the party, so I put it around my mother's neck. And she's 85. Oh, my God. I couldn't kill Look her. at that. She's so proper and British. <laughs> oh, Jane, please don't put the bell all around my neck. Actually, she's Dutch, and she just took she's it in Dutch? her <laughs> I don't even think I could do a Dutch accent. Can you do a little Dutch? Yeah, explain Hollands. Yeah. Excuse me? Hollands. Yeah, explain Hollands. She will say out, but she has that not to you just sound like you're clearing your throat. <laughs> That's what they sound like at home. Really? Yeah, yeah. So you grew up speaking Dutch? I, because it was, the, it was the language my parents used when they wanted to talk about Christmas presents or birthday presents or anything they didn't want us to know about. Yeah, so you so learned. So we all learn. We all know Dutch now. And then did you talk to each other in Dutch when other people were around when you got Double older? Double Dutch. Double, Double Dutch. Dutch. Yes. <laughs> Double Dutch bus coming down the street. Do you know that song? Google. No, I don't know that one. All right, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had this college roommate who was, her mother was from Norway. Yeah. And whenever the mom would come visit at college, they would talk to each other, like, Stavang, gavung, 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 yeah, gavung. Yeah. And I was positive they were saying, isn't she a pig? I hate her. You know, <laughs> you get so self-conscious when people do that yeah. around you. Yeah. yeah. Do your kids speak any other languages? Um, a little bit of French and Spanish. We sort of throw the odd word at them from time to time. Not right. really. Not really, yeah. no. Well, they're the inspiration for your books, which yes. I have to say, I've read to my children many, many times. Y Yum, Splat, Splat and, and the new one. The new boing. one, which is Boing. Right. And um, do they, they must enjoy the fact that they're sort of... Well, they're old enough captured. now to understand about this, and they love the books. Yeah. But when I went to the first book signing, there were like hundreds of people around the block, you know, all clutching onto their books waiting for me to sign it. And I thought, how cute. I'll have the boys there, and people can see the inspiration of the books. It wasn't cute at all. They ran out of our hands. We couldn't, and they went up, and they grabbed everybody's books. They said, mine, mine, mine. It's oh, my book. No. You can't have it. And I said, honey, look, there's stacks of these books here. We can share. No sharing. So oh, no. now they've come up with the title for the next book, which is going to be called Mine, No More Sharing. Really? Yeah. Are they not good at that? This is the age they're not Actually, good, right? Actually, they're very good at sharing. Because they have to. When you're twins, you have to share all the time. Yeah. But, um, you know, th th they like to have their own things. I'll bet they do. Yeah. I have a two and a half and a four and a half. They don't share anything. <laughs> you know, nothing. I mean, and if I say, can you guys uh, share this last thing of juice? <gasps> she had a bigger sip than me! <laughs> know. You know, it's like World War Three. <laughs> oh, we're going to take a break and come back and tell you all about uh, Jane's movie, which uh, is a great subject matter. Thank uh, you. That's going to be on later. Take a look. Um, after this break. That was wrong, but you know what I meant. We'll be right back. Still ahead, actress Claire Brown. Okay, yep. I used to make all my own clothes, and I've started beading again. I, I bead my clothes. Look how nice that looks. This is uh, turquoise. A little turquoise yeah. beads on it. Yeah. That's on really good. Isn't that fun? You know, you might want to send this to Oprah. <laughs> because 
they're doing that we're having a little craft you're section. You're helping her get crafty. I've yeah. been crafty forever. You know when they burnt your bras in the 70s? Yeah. I am that old. Yeah. You know, they, we had the see-through things and you're supposed to burn your bra so I was uncomfortable with nipple strings so I embroidered a blue tit and a great tit which are English birds on the appropriate places <laughs> okay <laughs> they're English birds okay I and believe I you <laughs> I, I totally believe you and let's move right on to the movie <laughs> You know, that'll be beeped out for the West Coast feed. Um, it's a British bird. It, it is. It is. There's an American bird that's called. Uh, okay, uh, let's get on to the movie. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you at the break. <laughs> um, the movie is a real serious subject matter, but a great yes. subject matter, something that not a lot of people know about. No, it's a true story about an English actress in the 1830s who came to America on tour doing Shakespeare, married an American, and found herself living on a plantation in uh, Georgia where her husband was the owner of 600 slaves. And it's about how appalled she was by the conditions, what she did to try to help them, how that impacted the slaves' lives and her own. And ultimately, she tried to, to help them escape. And in, in the end, she ended up losing her children, her marriage, everything because of her beliefs. And ultimately, she did amazing things. She published her journals when she found out that the British uh, government was going to support the South financially in the Civil War. And because of her journals, the British never supported the South. So, you know, in, in effect, she kind of made a big difference Definitely in a hero, history. yes. It's on Showtime on yeah. Easter Sunday. Uh, we have a clip, correct? Yes, we do. And uh, she's just, um, she's been in the infirmary. She's listened to one of the slaves who's got this terrible disease and she's going to try and find a doctor for her. And because this woman has, has spoken to her, she's now being whipped to her death. And okay. I'm protesting to my This husband. is the story of Fanny Campbell. It's on Showtime. Take a look. May I speak with you? Mr. Parker is having Harriet flogged for coming to see me. Do you know this? I ordered it. How could you? Have you no compassion? You caused it, Fanny, not I. We have rules here. You encouraged Harriet to break them. Slaves are to be whipped for expressing legitimate grievances? Is that a rule? Their grievances are rarely legitimate. And their physical complaints are always exaggerated. You don't know them. To rile them up as you did is dangerous and disruptive. I will not have you interfering in a system which you clearly don't understand. What I understood was your assurance that they were happy and well cared for. I suppose your promise to free them was equally hypocritical. Easter Sunday, that looks really great. I can't wait to see that. A lot of people who see it say it's the best work I've done. Really? And uh, my husband, James Keach, directed it, produced it, and actually stars in it as, as the other character in it, uh, no Dr. Kidding. Houston. Well, I'm definitely going to look Carradine. for it. Keith yeah. Carradine. Keith Carradine's a great actor. It's on Showtime on Sunday night. Thank you very much. Thank Good you, to see Rosie. you, and I'm so happy you're crafty. Yeah, thanks. Crafty Jane Seymour. We'll be right back.